It's still some time before Cobra Kai Season 5 will come out on September 9th, 2022, but we just can't get enough of this show, which is why we're so glad to hear a new face will be joining in Season 5. Do you know the true origin story of the OG Karate Kid? And what is the pattern Cobra Kai fans are starting to see in the season finales? Let's find out. First up, Alicia Hannah Kim is joining Cobra Kai for Season 5. Cobra Kai has enlisted the mesmerizing Alicia Hannah Kim for Cobra Kai Season 5, where she will be portraying the South Korean sensei Kim Dae-yoon. And she's going to help Terry Silver, who's played by Thomas Ian Griffith, with his plans to expand his chain of dojos. That's all we know so far regarding the new Cobra Kai character that's set to be introduced come September. But we can draw some conclusions with even this little. First off, if Kim Dae-yoon is going to play a key role in Silver's plans, she is obviously fighting for the dark side. And who even dares predict what that means? After getting John Kreese, who's portrayed by Martin Cove, out of the way and rigging the All Valley Tournament results, there's already nothing Silver won't do. Having another sensei come in to join the party can't be good. But aside from that, Kim Dae Un's arrival can only mean one concrete thing: that pupils like Kenny Payne and Tori Nichols, who we'll probably get to see more of now, as well as Dallas Dupree Young, has become a series regular, could be learning a few interesting new tricks this year, which is exciting, no matter what side you're on. Next, the Cobra Kai development that made absolutely no sense to fans. Cobra Kai has been on the rise from the moment it first found its way to YouTube Red in 2018, which has only escalated since its big move to Netflix. Still, even the best of shows can have scenes that make fans scratch their heads in confusion a little bit. In Cobra Kai, it was following the school brawl at the end of season two, when the school board and administrator implemented stricter security measures to crack down on potential forms of violence at school. However, though bag checks will definitely help keep out the more obvious weapons, that's not going to do much for all the martial arts related violence that has been going on. So a lot of fans were surprised that a show like Cobra Kai could let something as simple as that slip through the cracks of logical storytelling. Others say this was to point out the importance of martial arts and how it enables you to protect yourself even if all other weapons are taken away from you. They may be able to confiscate weapons they can't confiscate your skills. And then there were those who were convinced that it wasn't an oversight from the writers at all, but a subtle way to show how ineffective schools often are when it comes to stopping violence. Either way, the measure felt a little weak at best. What did you think? And now, the first look at Cobra Kai's star as Blue Beetle. Having young people as part of a cast is a lot of fun for a lot of reasons. It's a joy to see these characters grow with their actors, and to later watch them fly the nest and find happiness in other movies and TV shows. For Cobra Kai, Sholo Maridueña, the day has come to broaden his horizons as well. Maridueña, who plays Miguel Diaz in Cobra Kai, looks slightly out of place for the people who are used to seeing him sparring in dojos. He's been spotted all suited up on the set of Blue Beetle, which is expected to be released on August 18, 2023, looking very blue indeed. Sadly, he wasn't caught in the complete outfit, for his Blue Beetle helmet was missing. But there's no doubt these first few images will excite the fans who are anxiously awaiting the film's arrival. The film recently also confirmed the casting of Susan Sarandon, who will be playing Victoria Cord. Fans are already highly anticipating this comic book adaptation, and people are definitely rooting for the young actor, hoping the film will be just as big a success as the actor himself. Stay tuned. Next up, we're going to take a closer look at the true origin story of The Karate Kid, which goes even further than what you may have heard from creator Robert Mark Kramen, who could be Johnny Lawrence's father, and what is the pattern Cobra Kai fans are starting to see in the season finales. You don't want to miss out on that. Let's start with the true story of the Karate Kid. In truth, the whole of the Karate Kid is basically semi-autobiographical for creator Robert Mark Kamen. When Kamen was 17 years old, he was beaten up by a group of bullies at the 1964 New York World's Fair. This experience led Kamen to decide to take up karate, but it wasn't like it is today. There were very few dojos back before the Karate Kid came out, and those that did exist were serious, traditional, hardcore stuff. Ultimately, Kamen became the student of an Okinawan sensei named Meyotoku Yagi, who actually studied under Chojun Miyagi. By the time Kamen was approached by the head of Columbia Pictures to write a script loosely based on a story that producer Jerry Weintraub had seen on the local TV news, Kamen had been studying karate for about 17 years. The story Weintraub had heard about was about a boy from the valley who, like most kids who get bullied or picked on, just 
doesn't know how to respond. His mom, the true hero of the story here, has seen a sign on Ventura Boulevard for karate lessons and suggests they give it a try. As soon as the other kids in school found out the boy was doing karate, they left him alone and he eventually became a black belt. Do you think he knows the Karate Kid is about him? Following, who is Johnny Lawrence's father? For a portion of the Karate Kid fan base, Johnny Lawrence was never the bad guy. If anything, he's a victim of a lot of bullies himself, lashing out as anyone would. And if there was anyone with a chip on his shoulder, it was Daniel LaRusso, upset from being uprooted from New Jersey and hauled to California against his will. And it really showed in some scenes. So if the movie does need bad guys, we better all start pointing fingers to the bad adults, like John Kreese and his stepfather, Sid Weinberg. Johnny faced abuse from both of these men in power. At the end of the day, the reason why Johnny was a little punk was because he lacked a positive male father figure in his life, and the men who were there weren't exactly giving him a good example. So where was Johnny's biological father? His mother passed away around 15 years before we found ourselves in Cobra Kai, and Johnny wasn't able to ask her about his father. But rumor has it there must be a reason why Johnny Lawrence and John Kreese share a name. In a Cobra Kai flashback, we saw a distraught Johnny play with toys in a box of his father's discarded belongings, one of which is a toy soldier, which could hint at Kreese's military service in the Vietnam War. Though Kreese didn't show Johnny any mercy when he lost due to Daniel's illegal crane kick. And now, the pattern Cobra Kai fans are starting to see in the season finales. Cobra Kai has undoubtedly proven itself to be a worthy successor to the Karate Kid film series in just about every way possible. The series has given us updates on all our favorite legacy characters and introduced us to engaging new ones. In general, the show has displayed a clear reverence for the source material, one of the biggest reasons Cobra Kai has been such a huge success, which only seems to grow with each passing season. But with the passing of seasons grows the possibility for fans to spot those things that may not stand out at first. And in May of 2022, it happened. People in a Cobra Kai Reddit thread started talking about how the past four Cobra Kai season finales all have kept an interesting pattern going. For season one and three, there's cliffhangers at the endings. And for season two and season four, we end the season with the antagonist getting the last laugh. And once this little quirk was observed, fans quickly started debating whether this was just a silly coincidence or an actual trend. This discussion naturally led to fans wondering how much longer Cobra Kai will be able to sustain itself without the storyline spreading too thin. But fans shouldn't worry about that. In an interview with Collider, one of Cobra Kai's creators, Josh Heald, has said that they still have an endgame in sight, but they're also still writing beyond Season 5, which should give us enough time to see if there is a pattern hiding in Cobra Kai's season finales. And that's it for now. Who do you think is Johnny Lawrence's father? Could it be John Kreese? And do you think the season finale thing is a coincidence, or is there something to it? Let us know in the comments. And thanks for watching.